So in the last section, we learned how to use the Rails console to do create, read, update, and deletes. Um, in this section, I want to start to build our application so that we can do that via, um, via web on the browser. So um, one thing that I want to mention is that if we go into app and then controllers, we didn't create a categories controller yet, and we're going to need one. Also, if we go to app views, and you'll see we don't have a categories folder for our view files. If you go into posts, we have edit, index, new, and show. So I'd like to create these for our categories as well so we can edit, index, new, and show categories. And to do that, we're going to open a shell prompt. And we want to go to CD, we want to go to our sites directory, and then we want to go to my Ruby blog or whatever you named your application and what we want to do from here is just like we did in I think it was chapter 3 when we generated the post controller we want to generate a rails uh, sorry a categories controller so rails generate controller uh, categories it should be plural and here we can specify the views we want. Uh, I'm thinking we should just do the same views as we have for the posts. So that would be uh, index, edit, new, and show. So if we let that run, so it's creating all these views for us. Now, up to in this section we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to have the edit screen and have the new screen uh, views but in the next chapter we're gonna be implementing active admin which is a an awesome uh, administrative interface that we can integrate with our application so we're not gonna need these edit and show we're not gonna need these in for our final application but I, it's still a vital part of rails for you to understand so we're just going to create them for now. So if we go back to our app folder and, and the app, the actual app folder, and you go to controllers, we now have a categories controller. So and we can also go to views, and we have a categories folder with the the views that we created, which you can see on the console right here. So now we're all set to go with that. Um, in the last section, I had you update the routes file the routes config file and we added this okay so very important that you have these two uh, declared in your routes file or we won't be able to use the URLs correctly so what I want to do now is actually run our app in the browser so let's open up a uh, start our server with rails s So that should start your Webbrick server and put that aside. And now we can open up our browser. Let me open up a browser here. Okay, and let's just go to localhost 3000. So this is where we left off in our app. Um, if we go to posts, we have our two entries here. Now, if you remember, these are just static. These we entered these in our files. This is not being pulled from our database. This is these are not the posts that we did in the last section. So, if we open up, um, let's go to our file structure, and if we go to the app folder and then to the post controller you'll see this is where we added it if you remember I think we did it in the first section oh, I'm sorry the last chapter so this is where it's being pulled from what we want to do is we want do we want to get the information from our database as opposed to just text that we declare here so to do that I'm gonna get rid of this now I don't want a separate instance variable for each post. 
what I want to do is create a variable that will hold all of our posts. So to an instance variable should begin with the at sign symbol and I'm just going to call it posts. Now if you remember when we did the console stuff uh, the post.all command would get an, an array with all of our posts inside of it so I want to get that again but I want to do it in the file rather than in the console so we do that with just post all just like we did um, in the console so now we have an instance variable of posts which is it's holding our entire uh, post table now we don't display anything in the controller. The controller is strictly for um, directing the traffic, really. Uh, we display stuff in the views, if you remember the, the MVC pattern that we, we've been talking about. So let's save this. And let's open the view. Let's open our index view in the app folder and then views and posts. If we open the index view. So this is actually what we see here because the index view is what posts will default to. So what I want to do is I want to display dynamic information from the controller from this this instance variable. And this is this is accessible to us in the index view because it's in the index action or the index method. So the way we use that is we need to create a loop. We need to create an each loop that will, that will go through each post and we can grab the content that we need from each post. And so I want to keep the heading but I want to get rid of this static content. And I'm going to use the same format which is just an H3 tag and then a P tag. So I'll just move that down for now. And what I want to do is just create the loop. And to create the loop we want to just open some tags, which is just the less than and then the percent sign. And we want our instance variable, which is posts. Okay, so our instance variable, and we want to do uh, an each loop, so we'll do dot each do, and then we want to put our, we want to put posts in these pipe tags, all these pipe symbols. Uh, and then we can close that. This is, so this is the top of the loop. That opens it. Now we need to close it and we do that with end. So this opens it, this closes it. So this is grabbing all of the posts from the controller from this post.all. And we want to specify what we want to happen for each post or each iteration and what we want to do is display the title and the body so if we copy this we'll actually copy the horizontal rule as well and we paste that here Let's space this out so uh, if we just run it like this it's just going to display the static title and it's going to give us an error because this isn't even an instance variable anymore we, we took that out of the controller so for the title, what we want to do is display the dynamic title. And remember, if we're going to display stuff on the browser, we need to use the equal sign as well. Okay, so we just want to do uh, post dot title, and then we want to close them. So that should give us our dynamic title. Now we need to do the same thing here. Let's take this variable out, uh, and what we want to do here is post dot body. So this should work. Let's get rid of this static stuff. So if we save this and then we reload our page, we get our dynamic content. And if you remember, this is what we what we added in the Rails console in the last section. We have our title and then our paragraph. So this is this is now a database driven application. It's pulling this this stuff from the database. And we're also going to make, if not in this section, in the next, uh, we're going to make these titles clickable so we can click on them and it'll take us to the single post, uh, which is what I want to do next. I want to do, we're going to use the show action so that we can see uh, just single posts. And we'll do that through the URL 
um, say if it's if it's um, uh, the post with the ID of one, this would have a one before the post. Um, but I mean, it's not going to work yet because we haven't we haven't implemented it. But um, ultimately, that's what we should be able to do. So we want to go to our app folder and then go to the um, post controller. And so next, what we want to do is the show. Uh, I'm just going to move this up. It doesn't really. It does. This doesn't matter. The order. It's just for, just for my own personal OCD. So what we want to do here is you can see the index action took all. It took all the posts. What we want to do is use the find action to get get a single post. And we did this in the last section in the console, if you remember. Um, so. So this would be something like let's say post post dot find. Now this find action it takes a parameter, and the parameter should be the ID of the post. So if we have this, if we have post dot find one, it'll grab the post with the ID of one. Now we don't want this. We don't want our show method to just get the this one post with the ID of one. We need we need a dynamic value in here that'll change um, depending on whichever link we select here because you don't want the user to have to obviously you don't want them to put in the ID in the URL because um, that'd be insane so we have this params um, this value we can use which will grab the ID from the URL so we want to use params and some square brackets um, uh, one second, and we just want to put in the ID symbol like this. So this entire this little line right here is just going to grab the ID from the URL, and then it'll it'll proceed to do the define method, which will grab it out of the database. We don't have to write any queries here like we would with say PHP. Uh, it, it does that. It's all under the hood. Of, it Rails does that automatically. So let's save that. So that's all set. The control is all set. Make sure you save it. And then we want to go into the views folder and we want the post show view. Right now we just have this static heading. Um, we don't want that. Now if you remember in the index view we did the loop. And the reason for the loop was to go through each post and display. We don't need a loop because we're only displaying a single post. So all we need to do is to put our tags in and do um, at post. And we want the title here. So that should do it. That should give us the title. And then we want to put the paragraph tags. And in those tags, above we did the title. So in the ta in these tags, we want to do the uh, post dot body. Oh, and you need the at sign because it's an instance variable. So we should just get a heading with the title and the body of whatever post, whatever ID we put in the URL. So let's save this now. This here is, should be the first post. Uh, this is an updated title, and this is some sample text. So we'll go to post slash one, and here we have our, our single post. If we go to post slash two, we'll have our second post. Now if we go to three, which we don't have, we'll get an uh, active record error. So um, yeah, I mean, what we want here is a link to go to one and two. Um, Actually, one more thing. I'm gonna actually add the date. Since this is a blog, it's a good idea to have the date. So, if you remember, um, by default, Rails puts a created at and an updated at field. Uh, we'll call them in the database. So, we want the created at field. So, let's just. I'm just gonna put them in small tags. And if we copy this. 
and then we change body to created at and then save it and reload you'll see it gives us a date now this is a pretty horrible looking date format so let's, we can easily clean this up using the string to time function uh, the string f time function so what we want to do is just after the created at we want to add on str f time and we want some parentheses so that's the function str f time and in here we want to format the date and we can do um, I want the the day no the month yeah we'll do the month um, and then the day and I think I need a period here and why trying to remember the right syntax I think that's right let's save that go back and reload and I guess that wasn't right um oh I forgot the quote save reload and now we have March 20th 2013 so that's that's the show method um, well it's the show action I should say in the find method so now what we want to do is have the titles linkable or clickable so we want this to take us to the second post and this to the first and the way we do that we need to go back into our index if we go to views posts and index we what we want to do is just we want to make this a link and rails has a shortcut or a um, a helper uh, whatever you want to call it that helps us build links so we don't need to use these standard um, href tags what we want to do is just put in link to underscore two and then it takes two parameters first it takes what you want the link what the title should be which we're going to leave it as the post title uh, and then the next parameter is just uh, where you want it to go and we want it to go to uh, the post ID and that should work let's save it and reload and it didn't work link to post ID uh, link actually I think we can just leave the ID off and just have it as post yeah there we go so it's just link to uh, and then the post title post dot title and then just post so if we click on one of these it brings us to the actual single page so very very cool very easy now if we were to do this with PHP or another language uh, this would have been a lot more complicated and there would have been a lot more custom programming going on but Rails makes it uh, extremely easy to, to create, read, update, and delete. Um, I was going to try to squeeze in create and update in this section, but we're running out of time, so I, I'll make the next section. Uh, I'll show you how to actually go to post slash new and slash edit, so we can actually insert posts from the browser as well as update posts. So I'll see you in that video.